Hey guys, this is Ed, Paul, and Anna of Current Brand Media, and we are here to tell you a little bit more about our sponsor. Sportsball is a great subscription service geared towards minor league baseball fans. Each box features a different minor league team. You get a box every three months with minor league baseball gear, including different styles of hats like Ed's favorite, the dad hat. The cost is less than $12 a month. Proceeds from each box goes to More Than Baseball, the only nonprofit dedicated to the well-being of minor league baseball players. We all know that Parents' Days are coming up this summer, so if you've got a mom or a dad or a grandma or a grandpa who are particularly difficult to buy for, but you know they're baseball fans, this is the answer, guys. Meet your new favorite team at sportsballbox.com. Is there anybody there? <laughs> putting together these little puzzle piece elements and stuff like that you know as technology improves you know i've got printers now in the workshop that can print you know full size trophies and stuff like that what's up dad at group and welcome to part two of my conversation with nate muller of kentucky custom sports he is a customizer of football mini helmets we go into his process we talked about some of the teams that he likes the most and obviously uh we are both of our loves for star wars so yeah we talked about that and then you know we go into my famous not so famous questions so guys without further ado i'll give you the episode so i'll do the raw kits for people and then they can do that at home with you know rattle can it and stuff like if you're careful with the rattle can stuff like it'll look good you just have to take your time not rush it and stuff like that so a lot of people choose to not have me do them because it's expensive for me to do them and save some money by doing them themselves. So I'll print the shell kits for them and everything like that. It's got the clips, got the face mask. They can have whatever face mask they want, and then they can choose to do it themselves if they like. Wait a second. Hold on a second here, man. Uh, is this a Boba Fett one? Oh, yeah. Uh, Holy mother. Right, I've got that one. Out. Look at that yeah. thing. That's probably like the, the time spent and finished product that like the combo of those two, that's probably that and Moon Knight are probably the two I'm most happy with. Moon Knight was like on a whole nother, like, I love that. I did so Ooh. much paint layering and everything on that one. Like that was on a, a whole different stratosphere, but the Bobo one is, is still probably one of the ones I get recognized for most. You get the dent on it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Man. The funny thing is when I posted that to Twitter, because that helmet was so new, I had people like in the mentions and everything saying that I took a $1,500 helmet and like blow torched it and put a dent in it. Like, like, why is this guy putting dents in $1,500 helmets? Like, bro, it's, it's printed. It's okay. Calm down. <laughs> We're good. Don't worry about it. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've only been doing this for a little bit. Don't you worry about it. <laughs> but oh. People were big mad about the fact that I was like putting dents in this brand new helmet show. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, that's not it. It's not Ooh. real, guy. Calm down. <laughs> that Aztec helmet, though, bro. Yeah, I still got that one. Jeez. Yeah, the, a lot of the themed ones I do, because not only do I do them, but like the themed ones that I spend a lot of time on, I'll actually go out and do big photo shoots, too. So I actually drove about an hour and a half north to uh, Garden of the Gods and Shawnee National Forest and found some really cool rock formations. If you click on that one, you yep. kind of scroll through the pictures and found some some cool places to take pictures of it and kind of I spend that much time on it you know when I put it out there I want to kind of put it in its best light and give it a little different look I know I know I know you are a VT guy right but you got yourself some a good number of Ohio State helmets here yeah yep man like Ohio State, Michigan those are the blue blood schools so gotta yeah. show them some love um I'm actually, I was born in Akron, Ohio. I don't remember. We moved to Virginia, but when I was like a little, little baby, but my, all, all my uncles that I would sit in that back room and watch football with and everything are all huge Ohio state fans. So I still show Ohio state some love. Got it. I love it. I love it. That's cool, man. I mean, listen, dude, these things are like, like, I mean, the, the Miami Dolphins city edition, like with the NBA, yeah, yep. he, yeah. Oof, Miami that, Vice, gotta do yeah, it. Yeah, dude. The, the, oh man, these things. And that Spider-Man one. Let's talk about that one, dude. This thing. Bro, that's cool. That's just a digital render. I'm still working on that one. I've got a candy shell to mess with it. Um, I haven't finished that one yet. But there's a new version of that one coming down the pipe. The one Simon just put out with the, the yeah. Spider-Man and the Miles Morales look. I'm going to do both of those and trying to find a way to do some, some fun pictures with those. 
any of the ones that I do that have like the the themed look and there's lots of paint washes and different um, yeah. paint techniques and stuff like that. I, I usually, I won't just throw those in the light box and do my little rotating videos. I usually do. We'll actually go somewhere and do a cool photo shoot with those. That's cool. The though. Batman like one, the Batman axiom that's on there. That dude, was I was just going to ask you about that Batman yeah. one. Yep. So oh. that was fun. That was a different technique for me because I'd never done that. Um, that was from the Batman movie that just came out. So I wanted to make it look like in, in all the, the promo pictures and everything for it, it was Batman with the raindrops on his head. So I'd actually like wear gloves and like clear coat my gloves and then flick the clear coat onto the shell to give it that that raindrop Oof. look on it. So I'm always Man. trying to do new stuff like, let's you know, people don't want to see the same thing over and over again. They want to see something a little bit different. So I want to take you know, football equipment that people like, and then put like a little twist on it to make it, make it fun. I mean, that's what it's all about. And and that's what it is, right? Like, I mean, the uniqueness of each, you know, piece that you make, right. Somebody is going to get something that's, that's unique, right. That's not, you know, too off or whatever. That makes it more fun for me too. I don't want to be an assembly line, just slapping stuff together, putting some stickers on it and throwing it out the door. Like, uh, like the, the themed helmets where I'm doing the washes, the sanding, the taping off and masking and stuff like that and doing different finishes on. Yeah. Uh, that's fun for me. Like the, the clone trooper helmet I did, I had a blast doing that oh. one and then sanding off some of the paint that I put on there to make it look like it was, you know, carbon scar. Like I wanted it to look like it had been through the clone wars and, you know, came back and that's, you know, somebody they're done. They just retired. And that's, that's what it looks like after all that action happened. That thing looks so sexy, man. Uh, and I'm a star Wars fan, right? So when I see things like that, you're like, yeah, that looks that looks cool as hell, man. It was fun. I, I, I really enjoy doing the Star Wars ones because it lets me kind of kind of flex artistically a little bit, which I don't get to do a whole lot. Yeah, I was just going to say, and there's this latest one that you put the Virginia Tech one, man. Man, that was fun. That was a fun video to make because, you know, when you're at Virginia Tech, you know, the one side of the same, you got the cheerleaders there and it's let, let's go on one side and Hokies on the other. So uh, VT actually put out that audio for me. Thank you, VT. And I was able to use that in the reel. So every time it was let's go or Hokies, I wanted to change the camera angle while still keeping the positioning of the helmet as it was turning pretty close. So there wasn't a huge transition between the two, but it kept flicking back and forth between those two helmets. So I was, I was, I was kind of proud of myself on that one. I'm going to pat myself on the back. No, you should do These things are like <laughs> cool as hell, man. Like, I mean, think about those things, right? Like, I mean, it's just, bro, the, these things are like, they're work of art, man. You're you're an artist, my man. It's this fun. Thing... I enjoy doing it. So, um, how does the process like? Let's say that someone like me, right? Like, say, hey, man, I'll can can you? I want I want you to make me a helmet, right? Um, what's that process looks like, right? Because there has to be one, right? Like, I mean, you have Most to people go... just message me, and a lot of I get a lot of high school, especially this time of years. I get a, a lot of high school kids or parents message me about, um senior awards, stuff like that. I've done some Paducah Tillman ones here locally. They went to the state championships here in our area last year. So I've done a lot of work with that school and everything, um, getting some of that stuff out. Those are always fun to do. Um, but they just message me and we'll get something set up and, and get it rolling. You know, same thing. You just kind of almost like a catalog. You, this shell, a lot of times they'll, they'll send me the pictures because they don't know the face mask codes and stuff like that that I do. They'll just send me a picture of what their kid is wearing in youth football or high school football or whatever. And we'll work getting everything put together. I mean, I can print the shells, face masks. I can print the hard cup chin straps. I mean, we can get crazy with it if they want to. I've got all the different visors, um, face mask configurations, <laughs> rivets, uh, strap locks on speed flexes, the cams, um, snaps. I mean, Jeez. we can get wild with it. <laughs> That's cool, man. And I'm, I'm, I'm seeing right now, like you have a small little reel here of the, uh, the Moon Knight helmet that you made. Yeah. And then you can see the 3D uh, face mask being put together, man. And I'm, yeah, that's, a, that's artistry, dude. That's like, well, I like that one because it shows like not everybody gets to see. I like to do some of those kind of work in progress ones because you can kind of see where it started and how great and that's why the timeline is what it is because you know you start from this gray piece of plastic right. to then you know sand it down finish and everything like that and like the moon night i mean i had to layer so many different colors of paint over top of each other to finally get that kind of textured sandy 
you know, worn look to it. Cause I mean, that's what it is. Uh, yeah. And, and it looks amazing. I mean, th- th- like I said, like, I mean, those things, Oh, this Jacksonville one. I'm, I'm sorry. I just digress here. We're like this Jacksonville that you did yeah. the Jaguars Candy with finish, the finish gold mask. Yeah, dude. Those are the ones I like. Like I, I'll get people to, to message me about doing different ones. And I like the ones that it's, it's, it's nothing that's been done yet. So it's more fun for me because I'm p- kind of putting my own twist on, you know, a uh, team's colors. I always liked their teal color that they've had. I really liked, um, their short stint. This goes into my helmet nerd thing. Yeah. Um, during the MJD era, era, they almost had these two tone helmets. Mm-hmm. They had the black helmet shell. And I don't know if it was a, um, flake that they put in or what, but in certain lights it would look black, but I know seeing like old MJD pictures, it would, they had this clear two-tone look to it. So if it turned the right way, you could tell that there was some teal or something in it. And I don't know what got them to go from that to that AFL, XFL, weird uh, gradient thing they had there for a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I was never uh, a fan of it. Yeah. It was so bad. It just, it, did, it, it never really looked right in any color or any light or anything no, that's like more that. like, it, it looked like an indoor league football helmet that yeah. they were trying to take and kind of force it onto the nfl and it just never took right and you know it just it never did you're right because like i'm like i, I looked at it and i'm like if you would have just grab just one color and be gone be done i'd with been it. fine with the gold hey do the gold with like yeah. a black mask and stuff like that it'd have been fine the the weird gradient color shift thing that they did it just it wasn't it interesting i like that yeah you're right um i i never saw like you know nobody really had in the nfl a chrome look uh, except for now, the Atlanta Falcons who have the Falcons chrome on the mask, yeah, on the mask. Yep. Uh, but when it comes to that, that's usually a college thing, right? When candy is starting now. Now you've got the Jets with that green candy helmet, and that's that's not a bad look. And no, now the right. flake with that. So I think some of these alternate helmets are going to let these teams, you know, kind of play around with their look a little bit, kind of take right. a different take, like how I did on the Jacksonville one. Be like, think outside the box, and be like. What's something that'll look really cool that's our colors, but still stays true to Jacksonville, which still t- stays true to San Francisco. I was praying with all these, um, you know, alternates coming out that San Francisco would do like a golden gold chrome. Just go fully, since nobody had done it yet, just go all the way chrome with it. Yeah. You're, I, you're the 49ers. I'm, like yeah. gold is your thing. Just lean into it. I'm waiting to see if the Browns will use something cool, like a, the white helmet. I think they they did, you know, when they came out a while back, they used a white helmet. That would be cool to see. I know they're not going to use any logo on it because that's just not how they how they work. When you guys just brought back uh, Brownie the Elf, I just did one a little bit ago, a Brownie the Elf uh, speed flex I did. Ooh. It, yeah, that's on there. And that, that was fun to do. And just like something different, just did a metallic brown helmet with a metallic like burnt orange face mask and then put Brownie on the side of it. Oh, that's nice. That's super cool. I like that. I like uh, that. And you guys brought him back on the field this year. So, yep. I mean, they're they're into doing some of these alternate logos and bringing some of that stuff back. So I think in the next couple of years, you're going to see more and Na- more of that kind of stuff. National media really didn't, was not a fan of the uh, the Elf. But us fans, we were all, all for it. Love, I'm not even a Browns fan. I thought it was cool. Any yeah. kind of retro logos, anything that like pays homage to your past. I mean, that's what got you to this point today. So I'm always all about people bringing those back. I mean, you think like there's some of the old helmets that are going to be coming back, like the Seahawks with that silver and Royal oh, blue. Dude, I, I cannot think, wait for once that. Once I one. got into doing three, like that was one of the first ones I did that red Atlanta throwback. That was one of the first ones this spring. I did like a whole series about, you know, throwback. As soon as the NFL repealed band one helmet, I just went nuts on doing <laughs> some of my favorite <laughs> Uh, throwbacks because now that opened the door to having those coming back did the the red atlanta one with the gold stripes on there you know atlanta some of their old throwbacks they didn't they weren't true to the real atlanta throwback which is the black and red or black and white stripes with the gold outlines on the outside of it so i made sure to add that on there i i'm i'm looking at the uh, silver seahawks one that you made here yep man that's that is a sexy helmet right there. It's a there. classic look. And now you're taking that classic look that fans you, you I mean you've got all of this brand identity built into this for for decades. Yeah. And now you're, you're able to kind of pull that back into it and ultimately it's going to help them sell merchandise. So have, have not, you done 
have you done the new the new uh Bengals one because i'm sure people are going to want to ask for that one because that thing i haven't done that one yet i'm uh working on uh what's one of the throwbacks i'm working on right now man these things are cool as all hell yeah these things like i mean you're like a that ohio state with the yo and the buckeye on the bottom it's all red the texas longhorn Ooh, the that, Ohio State one's like one of my most popular reels I put out. That thing's got like 500,000 views. I think I'm up to 50,000 likes on it. Like that thing, I didn't expect it to go like this long with being that popular. Some of those things like kind of take off and then they just kind of trail out. That one, that candy red Ohio State one, people are just in love with. And yep. it would look so good with Ohio State wearing their black jerseys that they're wearing this weekend. Ooh. And then do that red candy mask with it. Black visor, black mask. Like Yes, sir. That will look cool. I'm looking at the Purdue one, the Chrome Purdue mm-hmm. that you did. That's cool as hell. UCF. Oh, all right, man. Look at that thing with the constellations in the top. Yeah. And the, oh, that's my probably God. one of the hardest like logo sets to get your hands on just because the amount of graphics that are kind of <laughs> crammed inside of that <laughs> logo and everything like that one was wild. That is wild. Like, of course, obviously you got some, uh, some awesome Oregon ducks there that you got. Yep. You gotta, yeah, you gotta respect the Ducks. They started this whole thing. They did. They most certainly did. the 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 New England Patriot Alabama, you know, cutoff that you helmet that you did here. Uh the Bucks, Bucks and Patriots. No, no, no. The Alabama Crimson Tie. Okay. And uh, New England Patriots. Okay. The one that's like you know, it's like split in the in in the it has number ten right for the in the background. And it has a silver part of the uh, of the New England Patriot one. Oh, that's that quarterback uh, from uh, what's his name? The New England Patriots quarterback. I'm going to get killed for Mac this. Jones? Mac Jones, the Mac Jones helmet. Yeah, that's a cool one. Because like you're you're like, OK, he just goes from, you know, from New from uh, Alabama to New England. Now, that's a cool one. I'm sure that took you a while to put together. The bronze ones, those are the ones that usually take a while because that uses like uh, wax metallic paint so that that has to be like slowly built up yeah and, and like hand rubs into the finish i mean that's a real like metallic finish that you're doing with it so those ones take a long time but that's one of those ones that you know i could see on like a, a college football coach's like desk or shelves in the background when he's doing his like zoom meetings and stuff like that the, those those ones are on a little bit different level yes sir oh man i'm telling you these things i i you got you got some skills dude this thing is like, and I see that you were working on, and then you did the uh, the Cleveland Browns one, but not with the with the elf, but with the dog. So I started with the dog, and then then nobody really like likes that one. So then I switched it up and got the elf ones in because I mean, those are the two. When, when I think of Cleveland Browns, if you're going to put a logo on the side of the helmet, those are the, your two like main options. So I went with yep. more of a with me being like a throwback guy and like yep. doing like the modern twists on the throwback logos. I thought that that would look cool having Brownie on the side of it. My, yeah, no, you. Uh, this thing is like that. That uh, Michigan State, the Spartans, mm-hmm. the one with the right here with the that you do in the little uh, Spartan look on it, and right down the middle. Yeah, that then, was a client of mine actually did it. So I did the mask for it and everything like that, and then he did the the finishing on it. Oh no way! That's pretty cool. A lot of times, like we don't do just the three D printed like whole kits and stuff like that. I make upgrade masks for the factory yeah. helmets themselves. So people can get the the masks for them and, you know, say Derek Henry wears his uh, 2EG2. I'm nerding out with my helmet codes. Again. <laughs> yeah, He's got go. his 2EG2 mask <laughs> <laughs> and people want that on there instead of just the factory one. So um, I've actually got factory upgrade masks that people can swap out, you know, a, a factory Riddell helmet and just upgrade the mask for it and give it a little custom look. So you don't have to go, you know, all, all in with, you know, the fully 3d printed speed flex yeah. build or something like that. You can just swap out a mask and kind of upgrade the look from that point of view. That's cool. Like, I mean, again, it, when it comes to, you know, to uh, hats for like, you know, people that collect new era hats and things like that, there's a big, huge niche on that. And then this is a different one, man. Right. Like, I mean, people are going to gravitate. If you're, if you're a huge football helmet guy, like you are, you're going to be like, yeah, there's different, you know, customizations that you can do and, and people are going to love it. People are going to just say, yeah, I want it here. Take yeah, my the money. Sign memorabilia right is a huge thing now too. So now if you've got, say you've already spent, you know, $250 getting, 
you know, somebody to sign a mini helmet, you yep. know, it's not a big deal to spend, you know, $50 on swapping that mask out to have, you know, Derek Henry's face mask on that signed helmet you have of his or something like that. I mean, and to make it even it more out. unique. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, man. This is cool. I love it. I love it. it. Uh, what uh, any other plans for you going forward, you know, for with with this? scale i mean as it's like how we talked about how when you know these resin printers and everything first came out it was you know me putting together these little puzzle piece elements and stuff like that you know as technology improves you know i've got printers now in the workshop that can print you know full-size trophies and stuff like that i've got pulled some some, some stuff out of the workshop yeah let's let's take a look at I some of your try stuff not to drop it so <laughs> Woo, oh, look at that so got the big 10 trophy Yep. With the years on there and everything like that. That's cool. So that's a big boy. And that's a cool piece to have on a shelf or something like that, all chromed out and everything that matches, you know, what they have. Um, lately, drop this down and not break it. And <laughs> some Hall of Fame bus. My boy over here, Patrick Willis. Oh, man, look at that thing, dude with the detail and everything like that that looks so legit crazy real dude look at that and i'm sure when you're done with it on there but even like the the hair the texture bro yeah it's fun man it's wild what how, how long did it take the printer to do that piece right there so you're talking about uh probably 16 hours, 16 hours, eight hours for the base because it's all keyed. So I can actually oh oh take okay. Patrick's head off. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'm still working with like certain scale, but for some of the bigger pieces, they actually have, they're keyed and then they actually go together and everything like that. You get glued once they're all finished and everything. But that's, I mean, that that's a, that's a big piece right there for resin printing. Uh, that's probably like an 18 inch, uh, 20 inch uh, Hall of Fame bust, which I mean, Pat's not in the Hall of Fame yet, but he will be soon. Yeah, but man, that looks. Bowman, so I mean, Bo if Bowman gets uh, elected or is at least a, a nominee, that Patrick Willis will be in there shortly after. For sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, any more helmets you got to show me? I want to see what you got there, man. Uh, so being a VT guy, got to show this one. This was actually commissioned for Bud Foster. I'm going to try and eventually. Yeah, get look at that around. thing. So that's actually, I've got the rust kind of built into it. So it's just like the lunch pail. Yep. Back in the early 2000s that Bud Foster made famous at VT. So I actually um, took a helmet shell and some Bondo automotive putty and kind of um, stipled that onto the shell itself and slowly built that texture up. So it looked like an actual authentic, you know, rusted lunch pail then dry brushed a lot of the rust effects and everything on there and exposed metal and stuff like that. Um, Niners. Being a Niners fan, gotta, gotta go with Debo. Look at that bumpers, thing. Candy visor. That looks so cool, dude. Oh, yeah. I want to get me some more helmets now. See, that's the problem. <laughs> dude, look at that thing. Such a different look. And then I was saying, like, we, you know, you don't have to, like, go all in on the 3D helmets. This is just a stock Riddell Speed helmet. Yep, 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 and yep. Now we've upgraded with one of yep. our big girl masks. My boy Luther Matty rocking this back when he played for VT. Some 3D bumpers on it. Now you've got something that you've taken a $20 helmet and made it, you know, a statement piece in your collection. Look at that thing. Yep. That's that's cool, man. Look at that VT ACC on it right in the front. Yep. 3D and, bumper. Oh my god, look at that thing. Yep. On a little tiny helmet. Little mini helmets, but those are the things. Those are like those are the ones that are selling like crazy. And then we got the color shift. Oh, did that one is that's the one. That, another another Zooty Ball Hawk with my favorite mask for the Hokies with having that bird theme. Yep. And depending on the light and how you turn it, you got. It but shines a different color. Good. You yeah. got that maroon on the bottom, and then you got that orange up here on the top, the lucid orange thing from RPO coatings. It's just such a sick look. That is a sick look, dude. Look at that thing. 
Oh my god, dude, that is insane. It's like the Arizona Sun Devils, I think, did that last year that they came out with that kind of color shift, two tone helmet. And with wow. it having the red and orange in it, I was like, you know, what, really, that would look cool on a VT helmet. I want to try and play with it. And I've always liked. I don't. I don't like being a San Francisco fan. I don't like them having. So San Francisco has their same logo on the side that yep. they do on the bumper. Yeah, well, VT, it needs something different. It's just redundant. So right. a VT just did it this year. I don't think I have one that has it. Yeah. So on the Chrome, they just switched this year to having the VT on the front bumper. It's not the maroon. That's a custom one I did. Yeah. Just the white ones with the V. But now you've got VT on the side, got VT on the front. You just kind of repeating yourself. So I took the word mark that they use on their pants and stuff and put the tech on there. See, just that's cool. Something. To, so now you've got VT on the side and you've got the tech word mark we use a lot anyway. Now on the front, it just, I feel like gives it a little bit different look. And that's cool. Little stuff like that I can tweak to make it, you know, stand out from some of the other stuff out there. I, I know this is going to, a lot of people are going to think this is very blasphemous, but have you ever done a football helmet with a baseball uh, theme on it? I haven't. I've I've wanted to do. Um, I, I I want to get my hands on that Phoenix Suns one that um, Simon did. And Dude, do I that saw one. that thing. Because the render he did of it, <clears throat> and with the how I can do some of my paint stuff, I think I could pull that off pretty good. But the way he did like the fade on the face mask with the star and everything, I mean, he just absolutely killed that one. Yeah, he did. He absolutely murdered that thing. That thing is ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, man, I want to see a fo- a baseball themed football helmet uh, or a hockey or something like that, just to throw people off, just to say, yeah. you know what, whatever. A lot of times, like our big our big mashups are a lot of the Star Wars stuff. I, I like the, the those Star are Wars stuff, I love those, are the those ones that I have a lot of fun with because it's stuff that doesn't normally go together. This whole like you know jock sports ball stuff, and then the kind of like nerd culture with Star Wars and everything. It just it feels so good when those two kind of come together. It's amazing. Uh, one of my favorite, like you, like you said, it's like you got the stormtroopers, you got the Boba Fett right. one. Um, I think I saw in here uh, one of the Mandalorians from the Mandalorian show in there. Uh, I've done a couple of different ones. We've done the Boba Fett one. I've done the Din Djarin, the actual like Mandalorian from the show. The yep. cool thing about that one was that's actually the paint on it is the Imperial Surface Illumiluster. That's the paint they use on the show. So that helmet is actually with the show from the or the paint from the show. Dude, that's legit. So that, it looks cool as it is, but then when you know that, like that puts it on a, a different level. Like I, that, I love that helmet just because it's and that paint is not cheap. So I had a cosplay guy I know that was like, "Yo, I got this. They gave it to me to try. Send me one of your helmets. I'm gonna do it." And he did it for me, and that's like by far one of my favorites. Oh man, that thing looks so cool. Yeah, their paint is sick. Imperial Surface just kills it with some of their like chrome textures and stuff like that. Yeah, dude, that's <laughs> I, I'm a fan. I'm a huge fan, huge, huge fan of the Star Wars theme when it comes to football helmets because it, it it's very customizable, right? Because the yeah. mask you can you can make the mask whatever you want, design it however you want, and it'll look super cool. Stormtroopers, whatever. Well, I've got one for the Jets. Um, somebody did they're gonna put decals and everything on it, um, licensing wise and stuff like that. I don't do a lot of the yeah the logos on the helmets and stuff like that, so. I did a blank build for him, but it's the Mandalorian helmet, you know, the, with the extruded logo on the back bumper, this is the way. And then we did, you know, matte black, everything like their, their alternate helmet this year, that stealth bomber helmet they're doing, but then did the, for the T visor for the Mandalorian, we did a candy green on it. And Ooh. it looks, I'm going to be putting pictures of that up probably this weekend. And it's, it's insane looking. Oh I, my put, I, I did a teaser on it the other day with the, one of my stories, but. I don't know if it's still up. I don't think oh, it is. Oh, man. This thing is like, yeah, all of them are cool, man. They're all super cool. Oh, and you got a lacrosse helmet here. Yeah. Look at That's that. Just, um, so what, we do all kinds of stuff. Um, I've actually worked with um, probably one of the cooler commissions I've got was to design the trophy for uh, USA Mullet Championships. <laughs> that's awesome it's so weird but it's, it's awesome like you've got to see their page and everything like that they actually do this nationwide contest for who's got the best kentucky waterfall going on and <laughs> I, I got to have a lot of fun with it i pitched them an idea for the helmet you know the mullet meme guy meets the emmy award meets larry the cable guy with kind of the cut off flannel shirt i was like you know you have all these stereotypes kind of built into what 
the mullet is and what the whole persona yeah like that and wearing a mullet is is like don't don't run away from it like lean into it like have some fun with it with the trophy embrace it and it was it was just gorgeous it's it's on the page somewhere um definitely one of the more unique pieces i've done and probably one of my <laughs> personal favorites as far as printing trophy we get to have a lot of fun with that one that's like, awesome me and simon worked together on that i kind of told him the idea that i pitched them um we worked together with them to kind of design and tweak some stuff and it was just i mean we killed it it was it was awesome that's hilarious I love that. it's literally like a mullet dude emmy award like it's it's awesome that's crazy hilarious <laughs> again embrace it and go with it there's always yeah, have something... some fun with it that's what this is all about it's about you know kind of playing around the workshop and and d- doing some work and everything like that but having a good time doing it at the same time that's awesome dude good for you man i'm seriously that's like i'm super impressed i wish i had this kind of skill i don't uh but man the fact that you are able to do something cool like this man it, it just speaks volumes to like the level of skill that you need to do something yeah. along like along these just lines the, just the printing alone before you even get into the paint stuff just getting like models supported right and hollowed out and that kind of stuff like people think it's like a you know printing a piece of paper you just hit the print button and you're good to go there's a lot more that goes into it than that and making sure it's supported right and the right orientation and not to get like too too nerdy with it, but it's no go for it, dude. A lot, a lot of a lot of tweaking with the designs and how it prints, not just making it print. Yeah, no hell yeah, dude. That thing is legit. I love it. Oh, this this uh, 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 Raiders one, man, with this uh, the Black Lives Matter on it. All right, dude, love it. That thing is legit. So that's Ooh. why I work with Simon on. I'm always kind of looking every week um just you you've got these companies that make these custom masks for the athletes and stuff like that like i talked about with badass masks doing the Jalen yeah. Ramsey one um they did a, a brian burns from the panthers yeah they did a custom one for him and everything too so i'm always looking for when those new masks come out to Pop kind of up, yeah. dive in and get them you know print ready and stuff like that to be able to use so. that's cool man like I, I i'm super impressed like you know, people like you guys like that do all these custom things um that are just you know like way out of my league but man from from little you know small little helmet pocket helmets to yeah mini helmets to right and busts. that's where we're at and now we're going to do bigger ones as the technology improves we're gonna do bigger stuff probably at the end of the year i'm going to try doing some uh full size face masks and stuff like that if it, things don't get too crazy around christmas time it's usually my busier time but now with <laughs> some of these bigger machines coming out um now we can start at it and they i mean it would all obviously just be for display only resin is super brittle so if you ever wore that on the field i mean it would shatter instantly right. the first you're time playing around in the backyard that thing is getting destroyed right but something that you're just going to have displayed and like i've got you know in the background with the glass cases and stuff like that just something that's going to sit there and be fine and then yeah. do some of these kind of crazy designs now put them in a scale that you know people can have on full-size helmets too Right. I mean, I got a, I got a replica Browns helmet. I got a cut, you know, I got a Kent state one, you know, it's so like, I mean, I'm, I got too many helmets uh, or even a full size replica. I would never in my life would go outside with it because it's a, it's a piece for, for my office and for my room. You know, I would never do something like that. Plus I'd never play football, you know, that would, and, and, and I'm being a 40 year old, you know, I can't yeah. be playing football right I'm done now. with that. I'm hung up, I'm hung up the cleats. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. I'm, I, I, you know, I wake up and I already get hurt. So I'm right. good. Um, all right, man. Uh, so before I go into my famous, not so famous questions, uh, anything else that you have in the works? I know you just said that you're working on, uh, some full size helmets coming up, you know, some replica full size helmets, anything else? Just upscaling, upscaling some of the trophies and stuff like that. I already do. <laughs> and stuff like that um i just whatever i'm just watching sports and see something that catches my eye and then you know hit Love up it. simon and we'll work together to to put some new stuff out um like uh wisconsin um they're in the belk bowl or the duke's mayo bowl yeah see the video where they when they drop the trophy and everything like that yes sir i have a printable version of the dropped trophy that they dug <laughs> the mayonnaise bottle too like stuff like that we'll just see something weird and be like that's something cool. That's something unique that happened in college football or the NFL or whatever that I, I want to do. Like, uh, just like, uh, just saying, like having fun watching it, seeing something that just kind of sticks out. And, and that one stuck out like homeboy dropped the trophy on the ground and it shattered. And then somebody had the idea to take athletic tape 
and put the mayonnaise bottle on top of the trophy <laughs> stub. Like that needs to be immortalized by a piece in somebody's collection. Like that Absolutely, was Absolutely, awesome. man. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. All right, my friend. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right. So the, uh, I'm going to tailor this a little bit. I usually say when you go to the ballparks, right? But when you go to a football game uh, and, you know, what is the first thing that you do when you go to a football game that you, as far as drink and food, what, what is your first they think that you get drink and food of choice? Uh, you gotta, gotta get the beer, find the, <laughs> the, the craft beer stand, wherever that's at. Um, we're, we go to Tennessee Titan games a lot. We'll get like some Goose Island IPA or something like that and mm-hmm. take away the seats. And you got to mm-hmm. get the the soft pretzel. Oh, In yeah. The stadium, nothing goes better with a nice like IPA than a, one of those soft pretzels. Soft pretzel, so good. Oh, yeah, man. That's, you're right. You're right. Uh, if you could be any fictional character, who would it be? Harry Potter. Nice. <laughs> that's <laughs> awesome. Why. That's just the first thing that came to mind. Harry Potter. We'll go with it. Hey man, dude, dude's Sorry. legit. I like it. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, what Disney princess do you think would make the best spy? Uh, Moana. That girl can can hold her own. Yeah, I don't know what her name is. I know my kids love that show, and that would be a good one. Well, it's Moana. Yeah, there you go. So they, <laughs> I like it. Uh, have you ever regifted a gift? I don't think so. No? Oh, okay. Good for you. What is the most boring sport? Soccer. It's soccer. <laughs> I'm not sorry. It's soccer. <laughs> I am not sorry, guys. I'll get flamed for it, but it's, it's soccer. <laughs> I like it. Uh, what was your uh, favorite TV show growing up? Mask. That cartoon mask before school. It's like one of my first, like, memories of like opening up i got that that little red corvette that turned into a plane Matt, no, that show man. was the jam <laughs> i love That's it awesome <laughs> i like it i like it okay if you could be in any movie which movie would it be Ooh. I don't know. We'll have to pass. We'll have to come back to that one. <laughs> okay, we'll come back to that one. Okay, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, okay, what's your spirit animal? Uh, turkey, a hokey. Come on now. <laughs> here it is. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, uh, and last one here. What is the worst song ever? Mbop. <laughs> no. No, can't do end it. it end it forever <laughs> forever it, it, it's, it's famous on 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 all uh karaoke stuff so <laughs> uh man Nate, this has been truly a lot of fun i've i've learned so much about this this world that i you know like for so long i was just like you know didn't really know about and you open my eyes to so many possibilities of what a little mini football helmet can be for so many people, yeah, man. So it's fun. It's fun. I appreciate you, you guys the- having me. Absolutely. Uh, where can people find you on, uh, on social media? Uh, Instagram uh, at Kentucky custom sports, uh, Twitter at 3d printed sports, um, Facebook, Kentucky custom sports usually do a, a lot of those. Um, TikTok, I think is at, kentucky custom sports okay so you guys just pretty much boom 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 just started doing tiktok a little bit ago the uh, luckily i had a a a client of mine that said you know i mainly had done twitter prior to that and he said you know with all your pictures and stuff like that like twitter is not the right venue for what you do go over to instagram it's all photo based and video based and stuff like that that was before reels got huge Mm -hmm. and um luckily (laughs) thank you (laughs) frank the um he had me switch over and get on there and my account just kind of kind of blew up like people really like the stuff that we're doing and and we have a lot of fun doing it awesome good for you man good luck to you uh definitely i will be talking to you off offline on on me getting a one custom piece because i definitely want to get one of these little puppies in my uh in my uh, office you gotta gotta do one of the uh baseball matchups we were talking about yes sir yes sir i love it all right man thank you so much yes sir appreciate it (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed that episode with Nate. Make sure you guys are following him on Twitter and Instagram. 
There's a lot of cool stuff he's putting out there. I'm a huge fan of Star Wars. And when we talk about Star Wars, I was geeking out. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. But make sure you guys are following him as well as make sure you guys are following the podcast. Give it five stars. Five stars means I go up on the rankings. Go up on the rankings. More people like you get to hear it. But before I go and before I end this episode, I want to give you guys my dad had joke of the episode. Why did the football coach go to the bank? To get his quarterback. All right, I'll see myself out. And until then, guys, keep on grinding and always support the minor leagues. See ya. This podcast is part of the Curved Brim Media Network. Here are some of the other members of Curved Brim Media. Hi, this is Ed Rivera of the Data Chronicles. Join me as I interview people just like you and players, coaches, GMs on the path that led you to become a fan of the sport. I'm Paul Caputo, and on the Baseball by Design podcast, I talk to minor league baseball teams, designers, and other super interesting people about what these minor league baseball logos mean. And I talk a little bit about ice cream helmets. What's up, Bucketheads? I'm Anna DiTomaso, and each week on the Baseball Bucket List podcast, I speak with a different fan about their favorite baseball memories, what the game means to them, and what's left to check off on their baseball bucket list. Hey guys, this is Patrick Larson from the Minor League Baseball Hat History Series, and in every episode I go through the history of minor league teams through my personal collection of hats. You can find me on Twitter at at PatLarson1. I hope you guys enjoy. This is Patrick and Corey of BaseballMapper.com, and we have made an interactive map to help highlight all baseball teams from the majors down to collegiate summer leagues. We want to bring you closer to baseball. So get on the site and find a team near you today. Learn more about Curve Brand Media at curvebrandmedia.com.